Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new study that very thoroughly managed to create the three-dimensional map of our galaxy. Not the entire galaxy, but the important parts. And this particular study was even able to confirm something we believed for a very long time, that our galaxy is not really flat. In other words, the typical representation of our galaxy, which is sort of like this, is somewhat incorrect. Our galaxy is, after all, quite warped. Let's talk about this and welcome to a demand. So this study you can find in the description below is from a Polish university, from University of Warsaw, and they've literally spent six years of their lives, their professional lives, to collect the data, to analyze it very thoroughly, and to then publish this paper. And honestly, just the amount of data they collected is already pretty impressive. They managed to analyze and thoroughly study 2400 different stars with a very very specific unique identification. They're known as Cepheid variables. Now a typical Cepheid variable looks something like this. As you can see, it sort of sparkles. In other words, it changes its luminosity. And here's a slightly more scientific version of this. It doesn't just change um, its luminosity, it actually even changes its size. The star itself manages to change its size because the gas on the inside cools down and then heats up, cools down and then heats up very regularly with a very predictable pattern based on the mass of the star itself. And sometimes this can be any, anywhere from several hours long to several months long, depending of course on the mass and the composition and the properties of the star. And we've managed to compile such a huge catalog of these stars that we know exactly what it means when one, for example, has a period of several hours. We know uh, exactly what its luminosity should be, so by looking far away and seeing that luminosity is not as bright, we can then determine the distance to that star very precisely. And this is why Cepheid variables are very often, and almost always, used as a kind of, um, we call them distance candles. Basically, the very bright objects in space that we use to identify distances, usually in nearby galaxies or nearby space or even our own galaxy. And so, for example, if I look into this dark patch of space and I find a few Cepheid variables here, and then I'm able to see their vibrational patterns or their changes in luminosity and calculate the period of that luminosity, I'll be then able to very precisely establish the distance to this part of the galaxy. And today, this accuracy is usually within about 5%. So in other words, by looking at this star and by seeing it uh, decrease in luminosity, increase in luminosity, and so on and so forth, um, I can usually establish the distance within about 5% of the actual value. And all of their data came from this beautiful telescope known as OGLI, which stands for Optical Gravitational Lensing Experiment. Now basically, by using the data from this telescope, they've discovered those stars, they've established the distance, where they're located, and were then able to plot all of this on a kind of a map. And this is, by the way, what all of this looked like from Warsaw. Uh, one of the scientists took this beautiful picture showing the actual Cepheid variables they were able to observe as well. And then the map itself, when you work it out, looks something like this. And as you can see here, the actual um, shape of the galaxy is no longer as flat as we imagined. As a matter of fact, you can see how it sort of folds on this side and also folds a little bit on the other side. And these folds were very likely formed by various gravitational interactions with other galaxies, and specifically with the galaxies that Milky Way most likely then consumed to increase its own mass. Now today we believe that these galaxies are still kind of out there somewhere, and most likely are orbiting around our own galaxy, or at least their leftovers are. And we've actually been discovering a lot of these leftovers known as stellar streams in the last few years. These stellar streams are pretty much all over the place, and every year we discover new ones. So this is kind of like the new exciting uh, part of research in astronomy, where we're trying to identify other stellar streams in a nearby vicinity and try to identify where they may have come from. But uh, right now we don't really know what form these unusual ripple-like formations, we just know that it's very likely from some really major interaction with other galaxies. Most importantly though, just like we expected before and just like we simulated before, and here's actually what the simulation might look like, the shape of the galaxy is not flat and seems to be somewhat rippled and somewhat warped. 
Now in this particular picture, what you're looking at is the simulation versus observation. So basically what we simulated it to be and then what we actually detected, which is kind of to say that we expected it to be this. And now the theory has officially been proven by observational analysis and by looking directly at those stars. And most specifically, um, these particular detections allowed us to much more thoroughly with a lot more detail to see the, where the actual um, warping starts and also how it sort of progresses throughout other parts of the galaxy. Now the warp itself, as you can see, only starts at a distance of roughly around 25,000 light years away from the center, so it doesn't really affect the rest of the galaxy. Our sun is about 27,000 light years away from the center, so it's already kind of in the initial stages of this ripple. So whatever affected the galaxy initially, and whatever gave the galaxy these unusual formations, may have happened not so far away from our sun uh, to begin with. And the other really interesting um, finding here, which can be actually better seen on the previous picture, and here it's the color that's important, the color here represents the age of the stars, and you'll notice that stars seem to come um, in chunks. Basically, you'll see the same color in one location, but not in the other location. And this also suggests to us that these Cepheid variables uh, come in sort of large formations of similar age, which is a really important finding because this really indicates to us that the star formation in galaxies, or at least in our galaxy, doesn't happen constantly. It really happens in these bursts of star formation. It happens for a while, then it stops. It happens for a while again, then it stops again. It's something that we definitely need to confirm or try to study a little bit more because this would indicate to us how galaxies grow and how they develop and how they evolve. And this particular finding really kind of confirms this burst evolution of galaxies. In other words, what galaxies kind of basically grow in spurts. They don't grow constantly. And to try to confirm this and to try to even extend this particular map and this study even further, the future studies from these scientists will focus on another type of very known stars known as RR Lyrae stars. Here's what the original RR Lyrae looks like, and these are also stars very similar to Cepheid variables that change their size and their um, actual temperature with time with very predictable phases that can be used to determine distances. But the difference between this and Cepheid variables is that they also live much longer and they can be found much farther away in the galaxy and it's very likely that we're going to be able to expand the map even more because of this. And I guess if it takes these scientists about six more years to um, come up with the part two of the study, well, we're gonna have to wait until uh, 2025. Although hopefully it won't take as long. And by then they'll definitely have a much better, more realistic and more uh, detailed representation of the galaxy. And hopefully someone will even make it into some kind of a simulation. But you know, putting 2,400 stars on a galactic map with very precise positions is going to be pretty challenging. But I'm sure someone will do it and then we'll talk about it in another video. But anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Check out the brilliant paper in the description below and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. In one of the future videos, we'll definitely come back and talk more about the shape of our galaxy and also various brilliant discoveries coming from amazing researchers out there. But for now, that's really it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye-bye.